Italy is the birthplace of opera. It has had a great effect on the progression of Western classical music. Similarly, it has had its great share of musicians, having some of the finest composers originating from there. One such talent is none other than Giuseppe Verdi. He is considered one of the most influential composers of the 19th century, and his works are still being performed in opera houses worldwide. But what is the story behind all this success? Let's find out. But first, please subscribe and don't forget to turn on the notification bell for more amazing videos. Let's get started. Giuseppe Verdi was an Italian composer of the Romantic era. His works mostly majored in the political agenda, such as the Chorus of the Hebrew Slave, which was mainly about unifying the country and freeing it from foreign control. Even though he often received criticism for his overly melodramatic and diatonic works, he is still considered to be the most important Italian composer of the Romantic era. He was born on October 9, 1813, in the community of Le Roncol, which was near Busseto in the province of Parma, Italy. His mother, Luigia Utini, was a spinner, while his father, Carlo Giuseppe, was a local innkeeper. Verdi's musical talent started to show when they moved from Le Roncol to the neighboring town of Busseto while he was just a boy. There, he began studying musical composition when he was just in his fourth year. During this time, he was brought to Spinet. By the time he was nine years old, he was already standing in for his teacher as the organist in the village church. He would attend the village school and later went to the Ginasio, secondary school in Busseto. Not long after this, he composed some music for the town church and the largely amateur orchestra. Unfortunately, most of this music is now lost. During this time in Borsetto, one of the leading citizens, Antonio Barazzi, who was a merchant and a fanatical music enthusiast, became like a second father to the young composer. He would take Verdi home and even fund his studies. So, in 1832, Verdi applied for admission at the Milan Conservatory. But he was rejected because he was already past the age of admission, and he played the piano poorly. However, he started his studies under Vincenzo Lavinia, who was a famous composer from Milan. Verdi was hired as a conductor by the Philharmonic Society in Buesetto in 1833. This would mark Verdi's start in the Italian music industry. In addition to composing, he would also make a living as an organist around this time. Three years later, in 1836, Verdi decided to get married to Margherita Barazzi, the daughter of one of his friends, Antonio Barazzi. Barazzi had a greater plan for Verdi. He wanted Verdi to return to Buaceto as music director. But when the post fell vacant in 1833, a furious political storm developed. This led to long delays. Soured by this, Verdi took a compromised position, in which he stayed from March 1836 to October 1838. He would mostly teach and compose, even though all he published was a set of songs. In 1838, when Verdi was 25 years old, he and his wife returned to Milan. While here, he completed his first opera in 1839 with the help of fellow musician Giulio Ricordi. The opera, which was called Alberto, made its debut production at the Opera House in Milan, La Scala. However, when Verdi was working on Alberto, he unfortunately had to do it after suffering two tragic personal tragedies. During this period, when he was working on the opera, he and Margarita had their first child, a daughter whom they called Virginia Maria Luigia Verdi in March 1837. However, Virginia did not make it past infancy and passed on August 12, 1838, just a year later. After that, in July 1838, Margarita bore another child a son this time, and they called him Verdi Isilio Romano Verdi. He did not make it past infancy as well and died in October 1839. After Alberto, Verdi followed it with another comic opera, Un Giorno di Regno, of which he gave the premiere in Milan in September 1840. This was at the Teatro alla Scala. However, unlike Alberto, the second opera by Verdi was not well received by the audience and the critics. To make the young musician's experience even worse, this new opera, Un Giorno di Regno, made its debut shortly after his wife, Margarita, died on June 18, 1840. She died at a very young age, at just 26 years old. All this tragedy made Verdi so discouraged that he felt he could not go on. First, the loss of the first child, then the second child, and now he had lost his wife. All this was too much for him. 
and so he entered the 1840s as a very disheartened person. All these tragedies greatly affected him and even lost his inspiration to continue creating music. He would soon find solace after he composed two new operas in 1842 and 1843. These two new operas, Nabucho and I Lombardi alla prima crociata, best known as I Lombardi, were different, as they were four-part operas. These two pieces would prove to be Verdi's breakthrough as they became such a huge success for the composer. Because of this, Verdi ended up having a prominent reputation in Italy's operatic theatre scene, and later on in the country's political scene as well. He started to gain a reputation and recognition. He mostly became known for his skill in creating melody and his profound sense of theatrical effect. Just as in addition to his fame was his rejection of the traditional opera for integrated scenes and unified acts. As for the rest of the 1840s, all the way through the 1850s, 1860s and 1870s, Verdi continued to gain fame and success from his masterpieces. Throughout the decades, he composed some very popular operatic series. He started with Rigoletto in 1851, followed closely by Il Trovatore and La Traviata in 1853. Don Carlos followed in 1867, and finally Ada, which premiered at the Khedivial Opera House in Cairo, Egypt in 1871. Four years later, Verdi composed another work of art, Mesa da Requiem, best known as Requiem. This was supposed to be his final composition because shortly after, he retired. Before we continue with the last part, just take a moment, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to find out more about some of the best composers of all time. Even though Verdi had plans to retire in the mid-1880s, he did not retire as he still went on to compose. Through a connection that was initiated by his longtime friend Giulio Ricordi, Verdi got the chance to collaborate with composer and novelist Arrigo Buerto, who was also known as Enrico Giuseppe Giovanni Buerto. These two worked together to complete Otello. After its completion in 1886, this four-act opera was performed for the first time at Milan's Teatro alla Scala on February 5, 1887. The opera was greatly received, with lots of praise throughout all of Europe. The opera itself was based on Othello, which was one of William Shakespeare's plays. To date, this opera is considered and regarded as one of the greatest operas ever to be composed. Even in his old age, Verdi refused to rest and retire. After Othello became so successful, he went on to work on yet another masterpiece. He worked on Falstaff, which was yet another collaboration with Puerto. The two completed this in 1890 when Verdi was almost leaving his 70s. Falstaff was also a comedic adaptation of one of the Shakespearean plays known as The Merry Wives of Windsor and Henry IV. These plays consist of three acts, so on February 9, 1893, the new opera made its debut at Milan's La Scala. The opera, Falstaff, proved to be as successful as the previous one, Otello, as all the reactions and remarks were received from everywhere and they were all highly positive. The opera is still earning tremendous renown all over. By this time, Giuseppe Verdi had already made a name for himself with the masterpieces that he wrote. He had already become famous throughout all of Europe. He had built a legacy and he had changed how everyone saw opera. He also composed other works of art throughout his career, which all proved to be very successful. Giuseppe Verdi retired from life itself on January the 27th, 1901, while he was in Milan, Italy. He composed more than 25 operas throughout his career. Some of his notable works, such as La Traviata, Rigoletto, Falstaff and Ida, would then go on to influence a young Giacomo Puccini. They would also shape all of the opera music as a whole. In addition to that, most of his works are still being performed more frequently than any other performers' compositions all over the world. Thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe. Remember to ring the bell more. Goodbye, and see you in the next video.